feel this is a nerdy crowd, I do. And by the way, I am a nerd, I am not a geek. I'm a nerd, not a geek. And what's the difference you say between a nerd and a geek? I actually have a uh, Venn diagram to show you. I, uh, I have lots of graphs and charts, be prepared. It takes three things to be a nerd. You have to be smart, socially awkward, and obsessed. All three of those things. So, sir, you're just laughing at the chart, sir. <laughs> Clearly, he's in marketing. <laughs> smart, socially awkward, and obsessed, you're a nerd. Geeks, on the other hand, tend to be just smart and obsessed. They're just Star Trek geeks, comic book geeks. They go to conventions. They go to public events. Not nerds. I'm not at a convention unless I'm working IT support. That's the only reason I'm there. Up here, if you're smart and socially awkward, uh, you're a dork. <laughs> and we have all spent time in the dork region. <laughs> and if you're socially awkward and obsessed, uh, you're a stalker. See how that works? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I love to watch people try to figure out where they are on my chart. <laughs> I think I'm a dork stalker. <laughs> So what does it mean to be a nerd? Because I'm a proud nerd. There's a couple of things you can tell if you're a nerd. First of all, when it comes to formal wear, if you're a nerd, we love cargo pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are with me. I got my cargo pants on right now, baby. I got pockets everywhere. I love cargo. I have cargo underwear on. That's how much I love cargo pants. And by the way, really big nerds, really big nerds, they're in cargo shorts. <laughs> Several, <laughs> people are pointing at each other. Oh yeah, Doug, Doug wears the cargo shorts. And I defend cargo pants. I do. I think they're superior. My wife is horrified that I wear cargo pants. I did a cargo pant analysis, okay? There's a regular pair of pants. That much is functional. That totally useless part of the pant. There is nothing. That right there, that is a great pair of pants. Look at that. That's a great pair of pants. Look at that. You could, you could carry your entire life in those pants. You could keep an extra pair of pants in a pocket of your pants. You're prepared for anything. What else does that mean to know? We love charts. I love charts. I love, I collect charts. And I like a chart that really sums things up. I like one visual experience, a whole, whole thing in one chart. For example, here's what's gonna happen if you're making microwave popcorn, okay? Here's the number of edible pieces here on the Y axis. And on the X axis is the time, right? You're at one minutes, two minutes, no pieces have popped, right? Very quiet, nothing happening in the microwave. At some point above two minutes, you don't know exactly where, all pieces are popped, all pieces are burned. <laughs> right? that, that happens every time, right? Quiet, 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 quiet. It's all, they're all popped. The bag is on fire, the smoke alarm is blaring, and your house will stink for at least a week. That is the experience. And that window of edible popcorn, that is a one nanosecond. You do not stand a chance. Good morning. It's Monday, September 12th, 2022, and this is another edition of Cafe Devo. Coming to you as we always do, almost live, courtesy of First Congregational Church, located at the point of Saginaw and Washington Streets, right here in beautiful downtown Duran, Michigan. I'm Pastor Steve Wood, hanging out with my pal Bugsy. <laughs> It's a Monday. There's not enough coffee in the world this morning, folks. <laughs> I hope your day is going well. We're returning once again this morning to the book Truth for Life. It was written by Pastor Alistair Begg and is copyright 2021, The Good Book Company. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, James 1.18. Johnny Carson 
The legendary television host once described an interaction between a disgruntled teenager and a disappointed father as they warred with one another. The teenager, about to slam the door and storm off, shouted, I didn't ask to be born. In response, the father shouted back, And if you had, I would have said no. <laughs> none of us asked to be born. And in fact, none of us asked to be born again. James points out the humbling truth that our spiritual birth was not something we prompted God to do. In his goodness, our new birth in Christ was God's choice, unpressured by our helplessness and unaided by our supposed goodness. He acted solely in accordance with his free, sovereign will. As Jesus put it, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Apart from the work of the Spirit in showing us Christ, our foolish hearts remain darkened, and sin has a deadening effect on our sense of morality. By nature, we are lost to sin's grip, desperately needing to know the solution to our predicament but unable to even see what the nature of our predicament is. But even having each become a member of God's family by grace through faith, we are still sometimes inclined to believe that our salvation is the result of what we did, that we chose and must continue to choose, to turn away from sin and turn to God in childlike trust. The truth, truth is, that it was of his own will that God brought us forth as we heard and were enabled by him to respond to the word of truth. When we put the pieces together, we discover that our choice of him was and is made possible only by his choice of us. As Alec Matyer put it, it is no more possible for us to be agents or contributors to our new birth than it was for us to be so in our natural birth. All the work from initial choice to completed deed is God's. What security, peace, and comfort are found in knowing that the goodness of God through Jesus Christ not only brought you to repentance and faith, but will also keep you in the faith. If your faith and salvation depended on you, they would never be secure and you would always be anxious, never having the assurance of your salvation. But your salvation depends on God, with whom there is no variation of shadow due to change. James 1.17 You did not ask to be born. God willed it. Therefore, you can be sure that you are his child, now, tomorrow, and every day, forever. For more on this, check out the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, chapter 36. Father, we thank you for another day that you've given us for this Monday that uh, has hope and opportunity and potential, all that is grounded in you. Bless us in it, Lord. Fill it with your presence. Make yourself known today, Father, in obvious and powerful ways. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, once again, we've come to the end of this edition of Cafe Devo. I'm Pastor Steve Wood signing off for now. God bless you, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow.